I'm Connor Old, and welcome back to another episode of Old's Oscar Countdown. And this week, we are going to be analyzing the acting races. I'm going to be giving you my front runner, who I think is going to win, at least as of right now, or who has the best odds to win. And then not necessarily my number two, but a potential spoiler, and really break down why this category is the way it is. But if you're new to the series, this is an awards-based channel, so we talk about everything awards-based, counting down ultimately to the Oscars. Last week, I gave my live reactions to the Oscar nominations. You guys should have shown a whole lot of support for that, so please keep that up. Comment below, like the video. That stuff always helps. Um, as always, there are timestamps in the description, so if you want to jump around and hear my thoughts on the different categories. But as we go down and count down into the Oscar predictions in terms of the actual night, I'm going to give my predictions as to what I think will win. Instead of before I get what's going to get nominated, now I'm going to predict what's going to win. Um, but there's going to be a little bit more of an irregularity throughout these upcoming weeks. I'm going to be giving my PGA reaction sag along with additional sort of categories, um, not sort of the traditional format of different categories and predicting them. <clears throat> but that being said, I decided to do this video because I really want to analyze the acting races that oftentimes we just assume and say, okay, Chadwick Boseman is winning best actor. And then particularly people who are later on the process, they'll go, wait, why is that? And we don't necessarily actually do a whole lot of analysis that sometimes we go, okay, Laura Dern is winning for Best Supporting Actress, move on, let's worry about the technical ca technical categories. You know, sometimes that's true, and oftentimes, you know, last year, there was the expected four that won. Um, but in some years, like uh, Glenn Close, everyone thought she was going to win for The Wife, and then someone like Olivia Coleman came on and won and sort of surprised us all. So, I do think it's worth to sort of realize who are the sort of potential front runners, maybe who's a lock, but also who could upset them and who's someone that we're not giving enough credit to that maybe could, could do um, overcome that person on surprise on Oscar night, but surprise at SAG even. So starting off with the best actress race, the front runner, in my opinion, is Carrie Mulligan. Um, I think she's the front runner because she's got a lot of things going for her in terms of the strength of her movie and the performance, but also that there's no real clear front runner, and I think Carrie Mulligan makes the most sense. So look at it from one sense. First of all, the movie's very well liked. We know that. Gone in for editing, gone in for picture. It could be a movie that very well could win for best picture. That's definitely true. Um, we know more generally, though, that the movie is well liked, um, and particularly Clearly, she is the star of the movie. I mean, more so than even someone like Frances McDormand or, or anyone else. Uh, even though Emerald Fennell did get nominated for director, I think Carrie Mulgan is sort of heart and soul of the movie, her performance, what she does, her character. And I think if you like the movie, you definitely like Carrie Mulgan. And even if you don't like the movie, I think you appreciate, at the very least, her performance. Um, she also has these sort of typical Oscar performance in the sense that she's doing a lot. It is not necessarily a subtle performance, it, but... but She's very good in it, and you know the comparisons to Joker in many ways in terms of the last year was the male rage of Joker, but now this is maybe the female rage and promising young woman. Well, if we're able to make those comparisons, well then why not look at what happened with Joker last year with Joaquin Phoenix winning? So there is sort of a precedent to sort of give this type of role um, to an actor. We did it last year. Um, but I also think there's a little bit more complexity in her role because she's asked to do a lot more as well. Um, she's asked to be in a sort of a rom-com and then it's like a dark comedy and then it's a thriller and then it's kind of complicated and maybe that's some pro people's uh, problems with the movie, but she has to do a lot because of sort of these shifts and sh uh, changes within in the movie. So she has to do a, a lot, um, and this type of role has been rewarded before. We know the movie's very well liked. Um, so there's a lot of things going for her in that sense. But also, if we look at the other nominees, her win makes the most sense. First of all, she was nominated 10 years ago for an education and has always been in great movies, sort of consistently. So she has sort of been putting in her time. She's been nominated before, so we know they like her, so they wouldn't be sort of opposed to the gift to her. Um, we know that these acting categories typically go younger, that they like their sort of new bright stars, the new ingenues, as they're called, with someone like Alicia Vikander or Brie Larson in recent years, or even someone like Emma Stone. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see someone like Carrie Mulgan, who is still younger, um, get a role and win for this. But like I said, the other nominees aren't necessarily as strong as we would think. Um, I think someone like Viola Davis for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, I think it disappointed not getting in for adapted screenplay, not getting in for picture. So I would be surprised if I think Chadwick Boseman's gonna win, and then also someone like Viola Davis, particularly because even though it's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, she's only She's very much a, a co-lead, I think, with, with Chadwick in this movie, that she's not just the sole star of, of the movie. She also won pretty recently for Fences in 2016, um, and she seems more of an actress that will be nominated many times, so we're not looking at Viola Davis and going, this is the last chance, we're going to give it to her. Plus, she's already won one pretty recently in 2016. 
So I just don't think the passion of the movie is there to actually get two wins for Ma Rainey. Um, then I look at someone like Frances Dorman from Nomadland, who has a, a very real shot too, but she's already won two Oscars. And frankly, the jump from two Oscars to three Oscars is massive. We've seen many two Oscar winners in recent years, um, but that doesn't mean that there's three Oscars. I mean, Meryl Streep, Catherine Hepburn, Peter O'Toole, these are these sort of class of people that you would put Frances McDormand in if she were to give her the third nom uh, the third her third win I think that's unlikely because I think it's very difficult to do. Someone like Denzel Washington in recent years couldn't do that. Also, she won even more recently than uh, Viola Davis for uh, 2017's Three Billboards Outside Ending, Missouri. So it'd be maybe a little bit odd to see her win uh, once again because we know the movie's very well liked, yes, but in a way, many ways, the star of the movie is Chloe Zhao because of her directing. We, she may even win for something like writing and things like that. I mean, she could be a three uh, Oscar winner of the night and it very much feels like a Chloe Zhao movie rather than you know a great Frances McDormand performance, even though she's terrific in it. But she definitely, I think, takes a back seat as to why people uh, love that movie. And then Vanessa Kirby could win, but she her movie's just not very well liked. I mean, Ellen Burst not getting in for Pieces of a Woman hurts and knocking uh, any other nominations. It was kind of, in many ways, sort of this appreciation of the movie went to her, but I just don't think enough people have seen the movie or liked the movie to get her that win. Um, and then the fourth slot is my potential spoiler, uh, Andre Day for The United States versus Billie Holiday. I think that she could be an Oscar night surprise. Now, oftentimes we want to look at the precursors. Like, she's not necessarily a spoiler because she's not going to win SAG because she wasn't nominated at SAG. She wasn't nominated. She wasn't even long listed at BAFTA. So she's not going to win there. So she's going to be this sort of looming th the threat that we're not exactly sure about. But what we do have is a past history of, of this person winning. We look at the best at the Golden Globes, we see that, oh, she won there. She beat out Carrie Mulligan in a similar category. Now, the Globes members are not the Academy member, but it is uh, worth knowing that this type of role is also something that appeals to the Oscars. First of all, she does her own singing. She plays a real-life person, and not only a real-life person, but a real-life singer. We've seen recent wins of someone like Rami Malek playing Freddie Mercury, of course, naturally comes to mind. And they do, or someone like last year's Best Actress winner, uh, Renee Zellweger playing uh, Judy Garland. So we see these sort of performances that get rewarded year near out. So there could be a situation where Carrie Mulgan feels like maybe she's going to get in, but we also have to know that Promising Young Woman is a divisive movie. That helps for nominations, but that doesn't necessarily help for the win. So if we think that there's a subsection of the Academy that doesn't like Promising Young Woman, that didn't react to it positively, well then they may want to go with someone like Andre Day, who unanimously wowed everyone. I think that when you watch The United States versus Billie Holiday, the sort of general consensus is that the movie isn't maybe terrific, but she is great. That we're promising young women, I think if you don't like the movie, you may not feel as strongly as about, about Carrie Mulligan. You're, you're going to say, yeah, she was good, but I don't know if I want to reward that movie. Whereas you look at someone like Andre Day, you, I think an Academy member would be more comfortable on a large scale of voting for Andre Day because seemingly, even though the movie wasn't well liked, they all liked her. She does her own singing. She plays a real life person. She checks all these boxes. We mentioned the ingenue part. Well, she's also young as well, so she could fit into that mold. She fits a perfect mold of an Oscar winner and I think could be a serious Oscar surprise at the night because BAFTA's not gonna tell us a lot, so it's gonna be just SAG. Maybe SAG is enough to put Carrie Mulligan over the edge and Promising Young Woman starts to do well in screenplay and things like that. So, so certain things line up, but Andre Day fits the mold so well and, and adds a couple things in terms of, I think her movie is less divisive and therefore maybe more popular within the Academy. Even though the movie isn't as well liked, we know that we have to look at the overall group. Nominations, voting is different than the overall group. So we have to watch out for that too. Then for best actor, my front runner is Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And I do think he's going to win, although that doesn't mean he is not vulnerable. Um, the unfortunate thing is that he's passed away. Now that's going to help his campaign, but it's also potentially going to hurt his campaign because if someone like Anthony Hopkins for The Father wins and maybe starts campaigning heavily and they start to put a lot of effort behind him, well, then there could be a situation where Chadwick literally can't campaign and can't be in front of people. But I still think Chadwick is going to win. And I'll talk about the spoiler a little bit later, but there's so many things going for Chadwick. I'll explain why he is the front runner. First of all, he's passed away, which is unfortunate. And we've seen actors who've passed away uh, with their last movies, they don't often win or even get nominated. I'm thinking of someone like a filmer, Philip Seymour Hoffman or a Robin Williams, but this is a sort of a unique case, a similar to someone like a Heath Ledger or even a Peter Finch, those being the past two um, previous actor winners um, who won after their death posthumously. 
And that is, particularly with someone like Heath Ledger and Chadwick Boseman, I think is an apt comparison because they're both young. They're both young, they're both sort of aspiring young actors and sort of are gone too soon. I think that factor helps. It also helps that his last movie is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. This is his last chance to get nominated. You can't have any other uh, chances to, to nominate him. Um, it's also a movie that I think if you look at it with that lens, you could see, wow, it's an incredible performance. He's really leaving everything out on the line. Also, the movie's well-liked. It got five nominations. So we know that this is arguably his best performance in one of his better movies that is well-liked, plus he died, plus this is his last performance. There's all these things going for him. I think his Globes win and his Critics' Choice win very much cemented himself as the leader, the front runner in terms of a guaranteed almost win. His widow's uh, speech at the Golden Globes was very moving, very powerful, um, and helped his chances even more, I think. And there is a little bit of a factor of like, are you gonna vote uh, against the dead guy? Are you going to really vote for someone like Anthony Hopkins who already has won, or someone like Gary Oldman in a similar situation? Or are you gonna vote for the young person who left us too soon in a movie that I like in a performance that's maybe his best performance? There's so many things going for him. It's a very much a monologue play like, in terms of he's allowed to be big and, and, and emotional, um, but also allows him to have a lot of monologues, which we know the Oscars like in these sort of big speeches. There's so many things that going for him, the type of role of the movie that he's in, the fact that this is his last role. There's many things just going for him in those sense, plus the previous past wins at the Globes, at the Critics' Choice, have sort of cemented himself as, yeah, Chadwick is going to win. And I think out of all the acting categories, this is the most of a lock. But like Andre Day, there's always a potential spoiler, and my potential spoiler for this category is Anthony Hopkins for The Father. Now, the consensus of people walking out of The Father, similar to Andre Day, is that he is the best part of the movie, except the movie is very well liked, unlike something like United States versus Billy Holiday. As a matter of fact, The Father was the sort of big surprise, I think, of the Oscar nominations in terms of how well it did. Jewish and Black Messiah was definitely one, but The Father got in in places where it's quote unquote shouldn't. Something like editing, something like production design, where it was sort of on the cusp and then actually made it in, I think, because of the strength of the film. Also did very well at the BAFTAs. We know it has sort of the British branch strength and, and appreciation. Now, I mentioned before that how could you vote against the dead guy? Well, maybe there's a little bit of Chadwick Boseman being the front runner, being the guy that everyone wants to nominate, you know. But if, in terms of a passionate vote, you may not feel passionate necessarily about Chadwick Boseman. The movie in general of Ma Rainey has been slipping. It didn't get in for screenplay, didn't get in for picture. That's disappointing. There also could be a scenario, if you think about it, where, oh, everyone's going to vote for him. Everyone's going to vote for Chadwick. Therefore, I'm going to do my passion vote and give it for Anthony Hopkins. I mean, there's enough people that may do that. You also look at the caliber of actor that he is. He's won before and has been nominated six times. He does feel like an actor who this may be very well be his last chance to get nominated and to win. He got nominated last year for the two popes. So if you want to give him a final kind of reward, this could be it. He's the unanimous best part of the movie that is very well liked. And I also believe in the spreading the wealth rule, as I call it. The fact that in the past five years, 82% of the Best Picture nominees have also won an Oscar. So oftentimes, it won't, we won't see these sort of Return of the King, Last Emperor style sweeps. That oftentimes we'll see, okay, Arrival will get Best Sound Editing because, you know, we haven't given everything anything to Arrival, so we'll give it there. Things like that are more often and more common in these past few years as the Academy has been expanding. So then you go down the list and you go, okay, uh, Nomadland probably will get director, Trial of Chicago 7, maybe screenplay or maybe editing, Minari maybe gets Yu Jung Yun for supporting actress or maybe even score, Promising Young Woman gets Carrie Mulgan, Sound of Metal gets Sound, Judas and the Black Messiah gets um, Daniel Kaluuya, um, Mank gets production designs, so then you go through it and you go, well, the father is kind of the one that's left out. And that's okay if everything else makes sense that, you know, seven of the eight win, get wins and, and the father doesn't. But the father, I think, has been well liked. It did overperform. So you want to go, well, what is the father going to get? Is the father going to get anything? Could he get it for adapted screenplay? Uh, maybe, yes, but maybe unlikely. Could he get it for Olivia Coleman? Definitely. But I think probably its best chances maybe could be Anthony Hopkins. Like I said, because he is the sort of unanimous favorite uh, when you come out of the movie that you really think if it weren't for Chadwick Boseman, it was him. So that means I think he could get a passionate vote for people that think everyone else is going to vote for Chadwick. So I, I'm going to give my vote for Anthony Hopkins. And then he surprises come Oscar night. Um, he does seem like the type of actor to win for two awards. Um, he's in a movie that should resonate with these sort of older members of the Academy, which we know that the Academy generally skews older. So the voters may want to show some love for the movie, and this may just be the area to do so. 
then best supporting actress my front runner is Yu Jun Yun for Minari uh, and in such a crazy year it's kind of hard to say what the front runner is because this category in particular has been so off the board I mean we really were going to nominations night not knowing a front runner but thinking any of the, the potential front runners or people that we thought would get nominated they could not they could have been not nominated at all. So there was a bit of a sort of shock and a surprise there. And it's kind of hard to sort of analyze who was in the lead. But ultimately, I went with Yu Jun Yun as the front runner right now because it's from Minari. And I mentioned before that 82% of the, of the past five years, the Best Picture nominees have often gone at least one Oscar. So we look at it, Minari, we know it's a very well-liked movie. Got it for director, got it for picture. I mean, some people think it could win Best Picture. I personally don't. I'd be surprised if it did. But where is its love going to go? Do we really think a movie like Minari, who we think is more well-liked because it's gone for a director, um, than something like The Father, well, where is that support going to lie? Is it going to be, I think, most likely with Yu Jun Yan for Minari? The problem being is that she didn't get in for Critics' Choice, which I think definitely hurts her. I think Maria Bakalova getting in there as a sort of critic's favorite, sort of labels her as a critic's favorite, versus someone like Yu Jun Yun who maybe kind of needed that kind of momentum and that support. Now, she, I think it will still always be in the conversation though, which is why I have her in the front runner. If someone like Olivia Coleman does get it in for SAG, I think that will hurt it. Even something like Amanda Seyfried, she's not gonna be in the contender because she didn't get um, that SAG nomination. So she won't have any momentum going into the movie and Mank doesn't have any momentum. So she's sort of out. But someone like Yu Jun Yun, even if she doesn't get the win for SAG, if Minari gets in for Best Ensemble, that definitely helps her chances. So she'd still be in the conversation that, okay, they gave it to her there, but because there's no Ensemble Award at the Oscars, okay, then that will they'll show their support for Minari. There's a lot of things that can go for her that pretty much the worst case scenario is if Minari loses Ensemble and she loses Supporting Actress. I think that definitely hurts her chances. But right now she's in a very good position because of how well liked the movie is and how she's a, a strong portion as to why people like that. She's very much an emotional center of the movie and she's very lovable in the movie and you like want to be sort of, you want, you, you want her to be your grandma or maybe she your own grandma within her performance. So there's there's many sort of elements with, within her role that even if she doesn't get in for SAG, but Minari gets on for Ensemble, for example, she could sort of very much propel herself to be the front runner still. But this category is full of spoilers and I recognize Glenn Close for Hillbilly Elegy. I think that there's a narrative that could be created if not has already been created for Glenn in this role. I think that she hasn't won before and we thought that a couple years ago it was going to be the wife but Olivia Coleman surprised and beat her out. Um, because of sort of how well like that movie was and how liked her performance was that ultimately the narrative of Glenn Close is this her year wasn't true. So that, that's to say that maybe that narrative just isn't going to hold up and maybe Glenn who is the most nominated actor will never win an Oscar and maybe she'll win it a couple of years from now for Sunset Boulevard or, or whatnot. But Hillbilly Elegy could be her chance. I mean, this is a weak category with no front runner. If the narrative is to sort of be propelled that she's never won before, she's the actor with the most amount of nominations without a win, we need to give her something. That could be a strong narrative that comes out. Um, Hillbilly Elegy is also a movie that's been seen more than something like The Wife with its um, additional makeup nomination. Oftentimes that makeup nomination is a telling to the actor win. We've seen actors with uh, prosthetics, someone like Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour win or, or Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody uh, win as well with these sort of prosthetics with this sort of additional features. And well, uh, Hillbilly Elegy and Glenn Close's character doesn't have prosthetics. She does sort of transform in terms of her hairstyle and her big glasses and her sort of drapey clothes. She doesn't look like the Glenn Close that's campaigning. So there is a transformation element that it really helps. So there's a transformation, transformation element, which we know helps. Oftentimes the winner will go to someone who's in the movie a lot. And I think Glenn Close is really like a co-lead alongside J.D. Vance and Amy Adams that she's in the movie a lot. So when you think of the movie, you think of her. She doesn't feel like a supporting actor, actress in that way. Way. It's also worth noting that if you look at these four acting categories, 2.9 out of the four winners for the past 10 years, their movie was nominated for Best Picture. So if you look at someone like last year, Laura Dern won for Marriage Story, uh, uh, Br Brad Pitt won for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. These movies were nominated for Best Picture. So, so oftentimes it's either all of the winners were nominated for Best Picture or sometimes it's only three out of four, but like I said, an average of 2.9 out of four. So if you're looking at your predictions, what hurts Glenn Close is that the fact that she's not um, potentially a winner in that sense that, are you gonna go with Chadwick Boseman and 
uh, Glenn Close, and then maybe Dale Kaluuya um, and Carrie Car Mulligan. That would be sort of two out of four, so that would be uncharacteristic of them. That would make more sense for someone like Yu Jin Yun to get in there. But then, like I said, there's other potential categories. Um, Olivia Colman I almost put in here because we know she's well-liked because of the factor that the crown is winning everywhere. The fact that uh, she, the sort of crown royal drama with Meghan and Harry is very popular right now. So the movie, uh, the Crown is really very popular right now. We know the movie of The Father is very well liked, so if it's not Anthony Hopkins, maybe it's Olivia Colman, and she surprises that way. Like I said, there's a lot of options for these winners to ultimately win at Oscar night, but I have identified Yu Jun Yun as the front runner, and then, and then I think Glenn as the sort of number two, because she has a lot of the factors, like I said, a large part within the movie, sort of a, a, a transform transformative uh, role, um, and also the fact that she's never won before. She's been nominated eight times. That is so rare. She's the most nominated actor of all time without winning. So I think that is really important to factor in. Then for Best Supporting Actor, my frontrunner is Daniel Kaluuya for Jewish and the Black Messiah. And I think he's the frontrunner because for months, ever since December, I've been telling you Judas and the Black Messiah is a best picture contender. It's a real contender. Watch out for this movie. Watch out. And then what happens over surprises on Oscar night and does very well. And I think the strong point of the movie for a lot of people is Dan Kaluuya and his performance. He is the sort of elusive Fred Hampton. He is the leader of the Black Panther Party. And many times without him, the Black Panther Party doesn't exist. And he is the sort of face of it within the sort of Chicago area. So in many ways, if you look at the performance, I think Dan Kaluuya his role as Fred Hampton checks so many boxes, more than maybe any other actor, for a type of Oscars win. We know the Oscars like when you play real life people. He's playing, of course, Fred Hampton, who is an iconic person, which also helps. You know, oftentimes the real life people who win are not these unknown people, but people, you know, famous people playing famous people. Um, it's also a situation where he's very, um, uh, in, engrossing within the movie. I mean, you always sort of want to know more about him. You want to spend more time with him. He gets to have a sort of three-dimensional character in the sense that he's a great orator, so he gets great speeches and monologues, which we know the Oscars helps. He also gets sort of a romantic side plot where we see more of a sensitive side to him. Um, and Daniel Kaluuya is also a young actor who's been nominated before, who they like, and can be seen as sort of an up-and-coming great actor. So it checks a lot of these boxes. Real-life person from a movie that we know as well, like from sort of a more of a populist general kind of a movie with long speeches, with sort of a, a multi-dimensional character, with a previous nominee, who's never won before. It's all these things that I think help with its chances to get in. And I think that Globes when really cemented himself as, okay, yeah, he beat out the others and this is going to be his, his award to lose. Um, but a lot of people have been saying that's a lock and I don't think it's a lock. I think there's a few things that people aren't considering that we should really factor in. And I think that the potential spoilers are real, more real than even something like a best actor or best actress. So the first thing I identified is that this category, particularly the actor, both actor and supporting actor categories, they like their old guys. They like their veterans, people who've been acting before, who's been nominated before, who've worked with everybody, and now it's finally their time. That the average age of an actor winner is much higher than the average age of an actress winner, and I don't think that's on purpose. That someone like Leonardo DiCaprio never won for all those times because he was still seen as this young actor. And if Dan Kaluuya were to win, he'd be the youngest actor since Heath Ledger almost 12 years ago now. So it's important to remember that this category doesn't like the sort of younger brand new actors. So it's going to be a little bit more rare for someone to, like Daniel Kaluuya to win. So he has to really wow people. We know the movie's very well liked, but it's also worth knowing that the movie was so well liked that his co-star, Lakeith Stanfield, also got nominated, which in a way maybe takes votes away from uh, uh, Daniel Kaluuya. Now you could say, oh, it's category fraud. You could say that, oh, it was a surprise, Connor. No one thought Lakeith would get in. And that's true, yes. But he got enough votes to get in for Best Supporting Actor, but he was campaigning for Best Actor, which means that some people voted for him in the Best Actor category. So if you combine the Best Actor category nominations and the Best Supporting Actor uh, nominations, there's a lot of support for Lakeith, that for as much as people like Daniel Kaluuya coming out of the movie, they also like Lakeith, and they may actually have a little bit of a preference towards there. It's also similar that they're both these young actors of similar age that are coming up and are really exciting, and we all think they're going to be great stuff, but who are we going to give it to? You could say that this is a Sam Rockwell and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri situation, in which Sam Rockwell and Woody Harrelson were both nominated, yet they went with Sam Rockwell for the winner. But then I would counter that in the fact that these past couple of years, what about Joe Pesci and Al Pacino for The Irishman? both nominated, neither one. What about Rachel Weisz and Emma Stone for The Favourite? Both nominated, neither one. I think Rachel Weisz could have won, maybe, if Emma Stone was not nominated, because you remember, Rachel Weisz was um, nominated at, at won the BAFTA, so she could have won, even though it went to Regina King. So there's these situations where, yes, 
Sometimes there's not, not a situation of vote splitting, but sometimes there is. And I think the fact that Lakeith, yes, got sort of surprisingly uh, got in in that final slot, but it's also worth knowing that some people voted for him in actor, and, and a lot of people voted for him for best supporting actor. And there's a the fact that usually the, the older uh, this category this category goes to older people within the academy. So there's a real chance for someone to steal this kind of award from Dan Cluey, the front runner right now. And I think the potential spoiler is going to be Sasha Baron Cohen from The Trial of Chicago 7. I think he's doing everything right, and if he wins and sort of surprises at one of these award shows, he could take with this and run with it. First of all, at the Globes, he won for both and sort of represented for, for Best best Lead Actor, and then, of course, Best Comedy Musical for, for the Borat movies. Oftentimes it helps when an actor is in another movie that is also well-liked, that gives them that sort of extra push. So. Sasha Baron Cohen was nominated for Best Writing for Borat, so we know the movie's well liked, it got on at PGA, but he wasn't nominated for acting for Borat, so if they want to give him support, they should put it in Trial of Chicago 7. So he has the Borat fans, but he also has the Trial of Chicago 7 fans. He's playing a real life person, the most recognizable person in the movie, in Abby Hoffman. He's also, so there's a, that's a type of role that they like. Similarly, Daniel Kaluuya has that, but so does Sasha Baron Cohen. He has very much these snarky lines from Aaron Sorkin. And if you look at the, the path of Best Picture, if you think Trial of Chicago 7 is a real, has a real chance at winning Best Picture, well, it would help if Sasha Baron Cohen uh, wins this award, and then it wins in screenplay, and then it wins in picture. That's a very traditional path to win Best Picture. So if you think Trial of Chicago 7 even has a chance to win Best Picture, I think you have to, to seriously consider Sasha Baron Cohen as a potential spoiler because of how well-liked that movie is. We, we know it's well-liked, and it could sort of surprise. I think Sasha Barry Cohen's also doing a, lot of, doing a lot of smart campaigning with the sort of anti-Trump thing, which could um, surprise and sort of alienate some voters, but it could make voters really sort of passionate about him, that he adds to sort of the, the advocacy that his character does, that he's also doing. So I think watch out for SAG. If he wins at SAG, I don't think this is Daniel Kaluuya's sort of award to, to lose. I think Sasha Baron Cohen is definitely in the race because of the strength of the movie, of the strength of his type of character that he's in and the way he's campaigning, that he's also once again an older actor, which would help him versus someone like uh, 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 Dan Kaluuya. So there's all these little factors that we have to consider in, um, but that's why I wanted to analyze these categories and see what you thought. So let me know in the comments down below who you think will win for the 2021 Oscar nominations in these acting categories. I just wanted to break them down because so many times people go, oh, Chadwick Boseman, he's the front runner for sure. But yeah, but why? So I really just want to explain why I thought someone like Chadwick Boseman was the front runner, but then someone like Anthony Hopkins could win and, and explore these possibilities as a potential because we could come to Oscar night and we could go, wow, I didn't see that coming. Well, maybe I should check, check Connor's video and explain why and see why. And we're gonna have to watch Sam BAFTA is not going to be very helpful this year, so it'll be interesting to see uh, that way and, and how that process works. But, you know, that's why you always subscribe to the channel and watch my videos so you can get the most up-to-date analysis and thoughts on these award shows so you can make the best predictions possible for your own. I think I proved that with my high percentage score with my Oscar nominations predictions, and I also expect to do that with my Oscar final predictions. That means stay tuned to the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it. But that's a bit of it, guys. Until next time, stay tuned.